Team Europe's backroom staff for the Solheim Cup is complete. Dame Laura Davies has today been appointed to the last vice captaincy position. And what vast experience she will bring to the team, having played in 12 Solheim Cups and won 87 tour titles. Her most recent win was just last month. With 30 years playing experience, Matthew says appointing her to the team was a no-brainer. Well, Davies played in the first ever Solheim Cup in 1990, making an impact straight away. And there we have it. They're away. Believe it or not, she's got a nine iron. She really does hit it like the men. That was 28 years ago. Well, Davies joins Suzanne Peterson and Catherine Emery as vice captains for 2019. Despite saying in the past she would never captain the team, Davies told us she didn't need to think twice about accepting this offer when it came. The captain has her final vice captain. None other than Europe's greatest ever Solheim Cup player. Well, I was at the Ryder Cup doing the commentary and uh, just got a message on my phone for being to, to meet down at the compound. And uh, I thought, ah, oh, I'm pretty sure I know what this is going to be. I said, yes, immediately. No, no. I've never actually been asked because everyone says, oh, you've never even been a vice captain. Why? And this pure and simple fact is, I've known none of the captains have ever. I've been asked indirectly yeah. from other people, but I've never actually been asked by a captain. Someone like Laura, I mean, her record speaks for herself. You know, played in the first 12, won 87 times. I mean, to have someone like that uh, to ask for advice and help is uh, kind of a no brainer. I know she's never wanted to be captain, so I was a bit unsure whether she'd want to do the vice captaincy, but uh, I barely could get the question out, and she was saying, yes, I'll do it, I'll do it. Her role in the team room to bring that seen it, done it, got the t-shirt experience, not to be giving the rousing Churchillian speeches. This will be one of the greatest comebacks in Solheim Cup history. That's why I don't think I'd be a particularly good captain, because I, ca I can't go in for all that rah, rah, rah business. For me, if you're on the Solheim Cup team, if you need geeing up, there's something wrong with you. I never wanted anyone to tell me how good I was and just go get them and all that nonsense. You've famously said, you never want to be a captain. Mm -hmm. Do you think this might whet your appetite, experiencing no. vice captaincy? Not at all, <laughs> no. I mean, you can never say never, but because I'm still playing, I don't even entertain the thought of it. Maybe when I'm retired, but by then I'll probably be irrelevant and won't be asked, but I'd probably still say no anyway. Yeah. Too much like hard work. Obviously, I've played in 12, I've got 12 bags. I've given a lot of them away, yeah. but these, these particular ones, I don't know why I chose them. There must be the odd name. There's, there's uh, Katrina Matthew there, the skipper. Yeah. That was 2003, Katrina's second Solheim Cup, but first victorious one. Her partner on day one, none other than Laura. Do you remember that? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really don't know. We, I mean, I played with so many different people over the years. She had the blue and yellow hair poking at the top oh, of the okay. visor. Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. That, that must have been Sweden, because for some reason someone got two tins of spray paint and everyone went mental. I didn't, I have to say. <laughs> I'm a dame after all. <laughs> Definitely younger days then. <laughs> you wouldn't be going for the blue and yellow hair next year. Maybe give that a miss, maybe a blue and yellow hat. But Matthew is the victor and it's Solheim success for the European sisters in arms. You know, I got the winning point there and then obviously the first winning team I've been on. So each one has its, you know, kind of special moments, um, but uh, that's certainly one that stands out. Laura's Solheim Cup career had started a whole 13 years before that. 1990, the inaugural one a low-key experiment of sorts. Europe huge underdogs against a US side packed with legends of the game. We played against Nancy Lopez and Pat Bradley, yeah, two Hall of Famers, and I said to Al on the chair, I remember it clearly, I said, oh God, I can't, I need a drink, I can't get me, I've my mouth dried up. She said, well, don't look now. Here comes Lopez and Bradley to, not huge cheers, because like I said, there wasn't that many people there, but yeah. they stomped onto the tee and we thought, oh, we've had it. And yeah, I think we beat them two and one. And there you have it. They dared to dream, and the dream becomes a reality. Davis Nicholas upset two of the best ever, Bradley and Lopez. We went to Dalmahoy two years later, and still we were there for fun and for a flogging, and yeah. we beat them. And yeah. that, that's when the Americans stood up and thought, oh, this isn't a walkover, this is actually competition. And that, the Dalmahoy will always be the, the, the tournament that made the Solheim Cup what it is. And it's Carsten and Louise Solheim who present the Solheim Cup to Mickey Walker, the European captain. A glorious victory for you. Do you have one particular moment at the Solheim Cup that sticks in your head clear? Um, down the hoy, just Ali and Nicholas and I, well, I had about a 30-footer, and I'll never forget it, I, Ali was, she used to read my putts, and I said, don't worry, Al, I've got this one, and I winked at her, and it was about 30 feet, never mm -hmm. gonna hold it. I, didn't, I wasn't the best putter ever. 
and right in the middle it went and I think the celebration we had there, I'll always, and Ali always remembers that one as well, it was just one of those things that we were enjoying it so much. Yeah. Julie Inkster was one of the Americans they beat that day and Laura got her bag for good measure. I was a bit nervous because I'd asked Dolly Pepper a few years before if she'd changed bags and she told me where to go. So, <laughs> but Julie, Julie's a little bit different, so she, um, she very kindly, she took my bag, I took her bag. And obviously she's been a successful captain and she'll be the captain you come up against next year. It's almost like the players demanded it. There's a lot of girls that could be the next captain, but Julie's doing such a good job and, and the youngsters really look up to it. As the Europeans will with Katrina Matthew. Like Laura, a Solheim Cup legend, having played in nine. Beanie, as she's affectionately known, is hugely popular with the players. I think she'd be laid back. I think, I, I, thank God she's not a stats person, because I know, you know, when Annika did it, it was stats mayhem, and everyone was filling forms out for two years, and I, I think uh, Beanie will be completely different to that. She'll create a nice atmosphere just because she's such a nice person and she just she just cruises along and I think the players will appreciate that. The more you kind of reflect on the ones you've played in, you realise perhaps at the time when you're playing in them, obviously you've got the pressure and that, so it's you don't... I mean, even though you enjoy it, you perhaps don't realise how much you've enjoyed it until you look back on them and uh, yeah. you kind of realise how much fun they were. The Solheim Cup is heading east to Europe. For Lotte Neumann's 12 stars, it's a rocky mountain high in Colorado. Do you have a favourite partner that you bonded with most? Um, I think the most fun. I mean, Ali was great to play with. I played with Trish Johnson. Trish and I had some great matches together. Um, but I think just for the sheer enthusiasm, because I was a bit older, and Mel gets yeah. so excited and so carried away with it all, in a good way. I mean, it's, it's just fun to be out there with her, and, and it's infectious. We need those sort of... She's like our porter, really, and yeah. he's so important to the, to the men's team. She remains hugely competitive, having won a senior major just last month. A senior slam for Laura Davies. No, it seems such a big trophy. There will be a time to reflect on over three decades of success, but not yet. Can you look back and be incredibly proud of what you achieved? Um, no, not at the moment, because I'm only interested about the next win, not the yeah. last win. And yeah. it's nice to know, and all, you know, all the nice things people say about me, that's great. But I'm still playing and still trying to win every, every week I turn up. It's Laura Davies, the first ever U.S. Senior Women's Open champion, and she does it in style. Is there still a chance you could be a playing vice captain next year? Oh, no, I don't, I don't, think, I don't even think I'd want to play anymore, because, you know, I play with these girls week in, week out, and... Yeah, I just think um, my game's not good enough under that pressure. I mean, if I if I ended up winning two or three European events and got if I got in the team, yeah. that's a different thing because my confidence levels would be up. But the chances of that, it's a, it's a million to one shot. Right in the middle of them all is a signed bag from John Daly. Yes, yeah, John. John I played with John in the JC Penny, a mixed tournament we had for years and years, and we actually won it. He's great fun off the course as well. Yeah. Because we used to go out for dinner in the evening, and people would come to the table constantly, and he'd sign everything for everyone. One of the friendliest guys you'll ever meet. Yeah. He gets a bit of a bad rap because. He is a bit excessive, yeah. <laughs> but uh, nicer bloke you'll never meet. Do you think you get the credit you deserve? Because you're one of Britain's greatest ever sports people. Oh, I think I've been really lucky. Yeah, now people people have been uh, incredibly kind to me. If women's golf had been on telly in the '90s, then I'd probably be as big as Faldo and yeah. Monty and all those. But uh, you know, we weren't on TV. People didn't know us, and it's a shame. Four years ago, she did receive the ultimate recognition for a glittering career, becoming Dame Laura. Do you insist on anyone calling you Dame? No, absolutely not. Well, my nickname now, it used to be Davo, because we always stick, because I spend a lot of time with the Australians, they love an O on the end yeah, of everything, they do. don't they? So I was Davo, so of course, when I was made a Dame, I'm now Damo. Yeah. So it was a pretty easy change. And for Damo, the excitement ahead of Glen Eagles next September has already begun. If we can have good weather for the week, I think it'll be one of the best Solheim Cups ever, because crowds will be enormous, yeah. home support will be great. Hopefully we're going to have an incredibly strong team. And it's, you know, in the early days, it's sizing up to be a really good-looking team. Yeah. Um, and it could be just the, the greatest week for, for European women's golf. And if those rookies are coming into the team room and saying, Damo, that's a bit of advice, is the main bit of advice just go out there and have fun? A hundred percent, because like I said, if you walk away on Sunday night and you think, well, I didn't enjoy that, then the whole thing's been wasted on you because... Although it is all, and for me, winning is everything, but that particular week, enjoyment is probably the biggest part of it, and it really has to be. And if you don't, you've missed a trick. 
From its very inception, she's been synonymous with this competition, the backbone of so many European sides. And the team room next year, England Eagles, will be richer for having the Solheim Cup's greatest ever player in it. Jamie Weir, Sky Sports.